hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting and very chilly episode here on the My Gardener channel. So as many of you know, we've been redoing the garden at the cottage and uh, you're going to see a lot more videos on this in the, in the upcoming uh, days because we're going to upload in parts kind of what we're doing. Um, as much as I'd really like to capture everything, it's very difficult to do because it's really an all hands on deck type of project and I apologize about that. And we are already very late in the season because the nature of the beast here is that the lake, we are on uh, Lake Huron. And the problem with that is the fact that Lake Huron really insulates a lot of the surrounding, uh, surrounding mile and a half, two miles of land. Um, it's very much a microclimate which is great to get a longer growing season, but it also starts later. So it's really about the same length of growing season. It's just the water temperature really dictates what the land temperature is. And so if you were to go like three, four, five miles in, it wouldn't even matter. It'd be basically, you could, you could have started gardening probably, probably three weeks ago, um, but because it's so cold here still and the water temperatures are really only, I'd say 40, like 45 degrees or so. Oftentimes the mornings are around 45 degrees, even even now, it's freezing right now. So that's so why I got a pretty heavy coat on. Um, but I wanna go show you what we're working on in the garden. Uh, we already built the raised beds, and so you saw that. Now we actually got them in last night. We finished uh, putting, putting them in the garden at around almost 10 o'clock. We were working by the, the, the light of the moon. It was a nice full moon. So it was, uh, it was very bright to work with. We also have a yard light there too. So it was enough light to at least see what we were doing to get the beds in. And uh, it looks great so far. A few, we had to kind of jigsaw puzzle a few, <laughs> a few beds around, um, but we have finally got something that we think looks really good. And uh, there's something we can at least work with for now. And, uh, and the rest is kind of going to be tentative as to what we're going to do with it. Um, and, uh, and kind of how we're going to, to manage the extra space because originally we had, uh, before I show you the beds, uh, originally we had planned for uh, the, the beds to be 10 feet long and 4 feet wide. And so I took the dimensions of the garden and we drew out a, a schematic, like a, a map, uh, kind of outlining how it's going to look. And I thought, wow, okay, great. All these beds are going to fit and we're going to have lots of room in the back of the garden to do like corn and vining plants. Well, I got overexcited once I saw the price of the 12 foot boards and the fact that they were actually cheaper than the 10 foot boards. Uh, they were running a special on them. So we thought, what the heck, let's get 12 foot boards and completely forgot about the schematic, which, you know, um, it happens, it's a mistake. <laughs> but uh, because of the layout of the beds, uh, we lost two feet on every bed. And since we have many beds kind of uh, in a row, um, four, four beds is basically eight feet, which is pretty much the entire uh, difference of what I thought we would have extra. So um, needless to say, the garden is full now. I thought it would only be a little over three quarters full with beds, um, but now it's completely full. <laughs> so it happens that way, it's fun. Um, just gotta roll with the punches and uh, make things work. It's fine, it's still the same amount of growable space, really. It's just more raised beds than, than uh, we expected there would be, which is totally fine. I'm not complaining whatsoever. So uh, let's go check it out now. I think you really are gonna love it. We did some really cool things to it and uh, we're gonna be filling them today. So maybe I'll be able to put in some footage of us filming them, filling them as well. All right, and here is the garden so far. This is the progress we made as of last night at 10 o'clock. <laughs> But basically, here is the entire layout. You can see that we have uh, way over there, those beds are actually running the wrong direction because again, we ran out of space. We were going to have another row going uh, this basically parallel to these beds, but because of the fact that uh, we ran out of space at the far end there, we had to run two beds parallel and two beds parallel. And then that little space there that you'll be able to see later is actually where we're going to have our corn. So that's the little space that we have left. Um, and then over here we ran into a problem staggering out the beds in between the asparagus bed because we built this uh, last year and this is four feet by 15 feet, which is a problem because that leaves a little odd spot there. So we simply uh, have a little bit of a jump and I think we're gonna put a little square bed right there as well. So 
that's basically what we got going on. And uh, oh, and over there, those are actually um, metal fire rings that we got for a super good deal. And I thought it kind of break up the, the wood look and it's gonna be cool because we're gonna do some very, very special things in those beds um, that uh, we aren't gonna be doing in, in the raised beds. So it's gonna be fun. All right, got about uh, three hours done, had a quick breakfast break, and it's around, I think, like 11 o'clock-ish, and we're making pretty good headway. Um, I'm making pretty good headway. Uh, the help has, the cavalry has not yet arrived. Um, the help is on the way, uh, but it's a nice breeze. It's uh, kind of hot, um, but it's better than kind of cold because I can wear lighter equipment. So I'm, I'm in a t-shirt and shorts, which is nice. Uh, the wind is blowing at a pretty good clip and uh, we're getting we're getting stuff done. So um, I do have five beds done, as you can see. Uh, we are, I'm, well, I am working on the, the sixth bed now, right over there. Um, and I wanted to show you kind of what we're doing to make it a little bit easier on ourselves, as well as uh, not have to use as much soil. So it's, it's, uh, it's interesting what we're doing um, because it's, it's a little bit, uh, I guess, I, it's not counterintuitive. It's just a little more work than we're used to. So. Um, as you can see down here, uh, this is actually about three inches lower. So, so this section right next to the bed is about three inches lower than this section. And that's because we're actually digging out the soil. Uh, the soil is now going into the beds. It's good soil. We brought in uh, two years, three years ago, uh, we brought in 30 cubic yards of compost. And that was an insane amount of work as well as money because we actually had it trucked up here from about an hour and a half away. So it was expensive to get that soil in here and it grew the plants amazing. So we don't just want to leave it on the ground and cover it with mulch and walk all over it. So we're putting it in the beds, hoping that it's going to, uh, well, not, we're not hoping, it will make the beds a lot looser and it will require a lot less bagged soil because we're still gonna need, it looks like a little bit here and there. We are actually better off than I thought, which is good, but we're still gonna need some bagged soil because uh, it, it, it's still a little too clumpy for my liking for raised beds. So we're gonna put some sand in from the beach and then we're also going to uh, put in some um, some peat moss and compost and stuff into into the beds here. Um, but coming over here, check out what we got going on. Uh, and it's really interesting what, we, uh, what we're doing to conserve some soil. All right, so as you can see here, this bed that I'm working on is about three inches taller than the bed next to it. And that's because we actually dig down underneath the bed and then stomp it down. That way, once we put mulch in, it's gonna be flush. It's gonna be below soil level. So there's not gonna be any weeds coming up underneath the beds. And also, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to require less soil because we're actually putting the beds down in the ground a little bit, which is going to reinforce the beds, make them last a little bit longer. And it's also going to look a little bit nicer as well because it's really gonna level them out nicely. What you see here is actually straw. What we've done is uh, we've gone and we have actually dug a trench all along the bed here, right in the center, and we've applied probably about four inches of straw, rotting straw, to the center there. And then we're gonna come back and we're actually going to uh, fill that with a really nice nitrogen rich fertilizer, which is gonna break that down. And that's going to actually uh, feed the soil over time, as well as absorb soil like a sponge. And so it's almost like a little mini Hugo culture method. Oh, it is Hugo culture method, but we're not using sticks. We're using just rotting straw that we had uh, for the bees that instead of um, letting it go to waste, we're putting it to good use in the garden. So all I'm doing is I'm just digging right around the beds here drop them down about three, four inches so they're level with all the rest of the other beds. And I'm simply piling up, I'm simply piling up the soil in the center of the bed there. So all this is good growable soil. We're gonna come back through and pull out all the small weeds later uh, because we don't have time for that. Uh, but we're just getting the beds filled and we might even do a little bit of planting on the beds that are going to be finished today so that um, at least some of the cold weather crops are in the ground but it's not easy work. It is a workout, which is great, because I could use it. All right, so we're just getting finished up here with the beds, um, some of the beds. Not all of them are finished, but we're kind of uh, jumping around from bed to bed now, just trying to finish stuff up. Um, the beds that are easier, we're trying to finish soon so we can get some plants in the ground. Uh, it's nice and windy, which is always great for filming, but hopefully the audio is coming through okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I was too sweaty to want to put on a mic. Um, but uh, we're gonna plant some cold weather stuff here first because that stuff's been in the, in the pots the longest and, uh, and we're hopefully gonna be able to finish up some more beds today that we can get some, some early tomatoes in 
and some early cucumbers and stuff in as well. So um, they've already been fertilized. They've already got sand thrown in um, and then as well as the, the peat. So it's gonna be a really great mix. And then um, remember uh, about a foot down, there's also straw. And that straw is gonna hold on to moisture throughout the season and the worms are gonna break it down. So I'm confident this soil is gonna be great. It's going to be a little bit of work to keep it weeded because uh, the soil that was actually here is now in the beds and we never weeded the soil. Uh, it was just really, really weedy from last year, if you remember. So um, we did our best job to kind of bury as many weeds as possible, but I think we're gonna be good, so let's get planting. I'll tell you what, this has been a full day's work and unfortunately also a product of maybe a little bit of uh, over optimism, not a bad thing, but uh, we did not get finished yet, uh, which is fine. We have a goal to be finished by Memorial Day. It's uh, well out of the way of frost. It's also a little bit later in the season than I was expecting, but you know, you really have to just realize that you can only do what you can do and work with it from there. The, gr the growing season is plenty long enough. I think it's a prime example I think people can actually learn from is the sense that sometimes people think that if they don't get their stuff in the ground, by the very first uh, you know, frost-free day that, uh, that, that they're gonna be behind schedule. And that's somewhat true, but really when it comes to long-term maturity, we've got plenty of time. I mean, if we look at our growing season, if we get tomatoes in by Memorial Day, we're gonna have ripe tomatoes a little bit after the 4th of July because they're already fruiting in the greenhouse. Um, they're flowering, not fruiting, but um, it's gonna be fine, so I'm not worried. But uh, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. I am absolutely wiped, I'm kind of on zombie mode so my brain's kind of a little hazy right now i'm gonna go get some rest and some water and some food and uh i will catch you all later so uh we're gonna do a quick pan around of the garden so you can see everything to be done um we have just two beds left to fill i was really bummed i couldn't get those filled yet because it's kind of that feeling of incompleteness but it's fine that's one of my bad habits in life is i just <laughs> i always have to just do one more thing and i think it's a good thing and a bad thing but um th these are the last two beds we have to fill and then we could really just kind of finish stuff out with sand, uh, sand compost, fertilizer, um, and plant. So it won't be that big of a deal, but we're gonna bring you all along for it when we do do it, uh, because we wanna bring you along for everything here in the garden. It's been a journey, it's been a long one. <laughs> and so I'm gonna let you all go. Hopefully you're having a great day wherever you are. Let us know in the comments box below what you're accomplishing in the garden or something that you're doing new. For us, it was raised beds and uh, it's a lot of work. So I'll talk to you all later. Hopefully you all are growing bigger going home. I'll catch you later. Bye.